Did Canada ultimately agree to sign this agreement even though U.S. tariffs on steel and aluminum have yet to be lifted? David McNaughton is Canada's ambassador to the United States and he joins us now from Toronto. Hi, Ambassador McNaughton. Great to have you back on. Good to be here. Ambassador, you told Politico earlier this fall that perhaps a low-ranking Canadian official with a bag over his head would be best, the best person to pick for the official signing if there wasn't a deal on steel and aluminum tariffs. Clearly, that didn't happen this morning. The Prime Minister was there. Why? Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, comments like that from me illustrate uh, the fact that I am not a career diplomat, and occasionally, uh, I, you know, I say things uh, say things like that for uh, to to illustrate the purpose. I mean, look, the reality is w we are not happy that the steel aluminum tariffs remain in place, as the minister said and the prime minister reiterated. Uh, we consider them to be illegal. We will be using every means we can not just legal, but also, as you know, we've put retaliatory tariffs in place that are harming uh, U.S. interests. And, and, you know, I think we're going to get to a point where they will remove them. We always said from the beginning that these two issues were separate. Uh, what I said frequently, and I know Katie knows this, uh, Katie Simpson knows it, is that, you know, it was going to be hard for us to be in a celebratory uh, mood, even though we consider this to be a good deal for Canada, Canadian workers and Canadian business as long as those tariffs were in place. And that's why, while the Prime Minister and the Minister were there to, to sign the deal, um, you know, it's it, we're, we're still a bit subdued until we find a way to make sure that these tariffs are gone. But they still were there. The Prime Minister was sure. still there. What changed between when the thinking was, you know, not going to this, not being part of the photo op, was the appropriate response to those tariffs not being lifted to, no, we should go. What, what changed? Well, I, you know, I, I think it was always the case that we were going to have a signing ceremony. The question really was, uh, you know, and I think you saw today that it was it was subdued on our part. And I think the prime minister made a very good point in terms of highlighting as part of the signing uh, that we wanted those tariffs to be gone. So uh, I don't think anything changed at all. We 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 are we we think that this is this uh, new NAFTA is a good deal for Canada. And, you know, one of the things that uh, people haven't talked about too much yet, but as part of the deal, uh, the side letter on autos uh, today is in effect. Well, the, the, the overall NAFTA agreement needs to have approval by uh, the U.S. Congress and, and Mexico and our uh, House of Commons. The reality is, is the protection against the use of 232 on the automotive sector is in effect as of today, and that's a significant accomplishment. But did the Canadian government, did, did Prime Minister Trudeau, by appearing there today, just give President Trump the green light to keep those tariffs on as long as he wants to? No, you know, I mean, it, it, look, showing up for a signing ceremony was a little bit of leverage, but it wasn't significant. The real leverage that we are exercising over the United States at the present moment in terms of the, uh, you know, these, these, these steel aluminum tariffs are that, first of all, they're illegal, and I think we will win in any, uh, in any legal dispute of it. But How secondly, long will that take, though? Well, I don't know, but in the meantime, we are, we, we are hearing every day, and I am working with labor unions, with businesses, with communities in the United States, to just illustrate to them how this is harming them and how, you know, working together, this is going to, uh, you know, to get rid of these tariffs will be beneficial both to the United States and to Canada. You know, in the, in the case of aluminum, even if every smelter in the United States came back to its full capacity, the United States could only produce 25% of its aluminum needs. So it's going to have to import 75% of its aluminum needs from somewhere. Now, do you want them to come from Canada or do you want it to come from Russia and China and Kazakhstan? And I think that's why these tariffs don't make any sense from a from an American point of view, quite apart from our point of view. Unfortunately, that message doesn't appear to be getting through. Robert Lighthizer, the U.S. trade representative, just today described them as successful. Well, yeah, so I'm sure he did. Uh, but what does that say? I mean, you say your leverage is the argument, the, the very uh, salient you know, I, and understandable argument. I'm sure, I'm sure what Bob is talking about is that, uh, is that for, uh, you know, people who've been overproducing steel and aluminum, like China and like other countries, that this is starting to have the effect of bringing back American jobs in, in the steel industry and to some degree in the aluminum industry. But that... That deals with overproduction from countries 
that are non-market economies. Our relationship with the United States in terms of both steel and aluminum is long-standing. You know, we have the same union, the United Steel Workers on both sides of the border. We're not the problem. And I think ultimately, uh, and I hope sooner rather than later, the United States will come around to that view. And I think there are lots of people in the United States, lots of businesses, labor unions, consumer groups, who are pressing the United States to lift these tariffs, and I think they will be lifted. And certainly that's our position, and we're not going to change it. Is the goal still to have them lifted completely, or is agreeing to steel and aluminum quotas uh, a possibility at this it makes point? No, it makes no sense to, to agree to... Uh, Even with room for growth? It makes no sense to agree to aluminum quotas, because all that will do is open up the market to non-market economies like uh, Russia and China. Uh, in steel, if we had a uh, uh, protection against the use of 232, uh, like we have in the automotive sector, whereby you'd have to increase your production by 70% before they would even be considered to be uh, in effect, we might consider something like that. But, but this nonsense about talking about managed trade on 2017 levels is just not on. It's just not on. But there is a number uh, on steel to which the Canadian government would consider that as a, as a possibility. That ha I'm not saying it's the 2017 ones. I don't know what it would be, but you're, you're referring to the auto letter where there was a certain percentage of growth allowed. If that would be the case. It wasn't, it wasn't just a, a certain percentage. A big, a big percentage. It was, it, was, it was almost a doubling of the industry before they so would, would it, even consider. Would it have to be something to that degree? You know, what we're doing is we are consulting with our industry, with our unions, with the communities. Uh, and, uh, you know, before we would agree to something, we'd make sure that uh, there, was, there was ample room for growth in our industry. You know, I, I mean, I grew up in Hamilton. I know how important this industry is to places like Hamilton, Sault Ste. Marie, and uh, southwestern Ontario in general, and also to places like Regina and, and, uh, and the western provinces. So, so we're going to hang tough on this. These are illegal tariffs, and uh, we're not going to give way. Uh, we're we're going to find a way. Uh, to work with the American interests who, who share the same view we do. Okay, thank you very much, Ambassador. Really appreciate thank your you. time. Thank you.